Hi guys, it's me Danielle Danny Buttons, and I'm here today with part two of my full coloring book collection video and finished pages and statistics for 2021. Part one was Disney. I will link that up above if you didn't see it. I really love all my Disney books. We had 45 books in part one, and spoiler, we have 55 books in part two. Right now, I'm going to insert a clip of my bookcase to kind of show you what we're working with. And then I'll be right back. Okay, so in case you haven't seen my office tour, I figured I'd give you an overview of where my books live. So this is just like behind my desk. And this is all of my Disney books. So this was everything that you saw in part one. So there's 45 books there apparently. Then we have my cart. And I switch out what's on my cart basically monthly. And I like to kind of pick what books I think I'm going to use that month and then I'll put them on my cart and then I have on my giant bookcase basically what is that one two three four five full of books and I'm getting close to needing more space if I'm honest with you but anyway so this shelf is kind of like my super faves that are not color by number so it's like my Hannah Lynn collection my Erie collection and then some like my Emily Liedhall Oberg and Color It books. Then the next shelf, that is basically all of my color by number and one color books and mandala books and things like that. Then we have basically everything that's not color by number and then overflow of not color by number down there. And then this section has my paint by sticker, my, what are you? my goodness, Christmas book, sorry, and my Lulu Mayo collection, because those are the little short guys. So I'm trying to figure out how many parts I'm gonna need and how I'm gonna split this up. By the time you're seeing this, I already have done that, but I'm not really sure because I'm trying to film them all so that I can redo my cart for, for May. So I think last year I did four parts and I think this year we're gonna get five, but I guess you guys will find out, so back to our regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so since I filmed that little clip, I have made some decisions. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in that clip, that was a few days ago, but uh, Disney's already done, so that was the one side. Today we were filming the bottom two cubes, so it's kind of like random books, and my Lulu Mayo collection, and then my Christmas books. So I thought that would be good to put the more sporadic ones right now while you're still really interested and then we'll be saving all the good ones for the end so you'll stick around. So after this video, the next part will be basically all of my non-color by numbers, then all of my color by numbers and kind of like similar things to that. So the mandalas and the one color books and things like that. And then finally we will end on a bang with like my favorites. So favorite artists and favorite books. So that is the schedule. Um, my same disclaimers as last time. And ugh, ugh, it's even more hurtful this time because one of the books that was supposed to be in this collection, I just gave away like two days ago and I had 30 finishes in it. So my numbers are all skewed, but that is to say my collection changes frequently. I like to lend books to people so that I can hopefully inspire new coloring friends. So there are some books missing and if you remember some of those books, that doesn't mean they're gone forever. They're just gone for right now. Um, I find that with my friends, it doesn't put pressure on them if I give them a book that's mine and I'm like, okay, this is used. And then if you hate coloring and you don't want to do it, just give the books back. But if you love it, I'll get you your own kind of thing. And yeah, that's worked so far. I had my cousin gave me the book back. She's like, nope, this isn't really for me. And I'm like, okie dokie. And then some of my other friends, they still have the books and I cannot, I'm very happy. And I'm hoping that that means they'll keep coloring and we'll see. But anyway, all that to say, that is number one. I thought I had two more but now I don't remember. Hopefully this is all of them in this area and we'll see, we'll just get into it. So the first one right off the bat is Color the 90s. I don't know what the artist is. I remember she doesn't have her name on the front. Let's see if I can find her. Outrageous Katie. So 
This is one of my older books, actually. Let me also move my camera up. Oh, there was a peek at the stack, stack and a peek at my Powerline shirt. This is one of my older books. If you smell this book, mm, I've used only, or basically, what are you called? Scented markers in here. It smells delicious. But this is one of the books that I got very back in the beginning. And what I decided to do was just kind of go on any page I wanted and color whatever I wanted. So there's only one completed page, which I will skip and show you. And it is Bill Nye the Science Guy. And I went back and like finished it entirely. But about half of these pages have at least something done, if not more. That one's almost done. I was almost going to consider it, but I did not. But I just kind of went and I was using, I think, 12 scented markers so I just whatever I felt like coloring is what I colored and that kind of really made me fall in love with adult coloring because I've said many times now that um, the first books that were coming out that were considered adult were just so many small little pieces and it just stressed me out and I didn't love it but I really loved this process so this is such a fun book and I should definitely just like keep this next to me so I can continue to randomly working here i had started using crayons but this wasn't bold enough so i was sad about it but then once i switched to those markers yes and the fact that they were scented really made it feel extra 90s to me so that's exciting next up i have mer world problems and this kathy from spicy cat colors just got and she was like i wonder if anyone has it and i was like me i have it so I actually have only used, oh, this is by Theo Nicole Lorenz. I've only used crayons in this too. And I just did the first, I was doing them in order. And uh, this was done. Like obviously it's not very done, but I considered it done. So I'm consider continuing to consider it done. And this has like sassy words and all the different mer people. I think this was my last one. You have to leave the sea kingdom to get tacos. And of course the next one was the turtle. Sea turtles don't have boundaries. I think I'd be okay with that, but I don't know. But this is a really fun one and it's more of a parody. And I know that this artist has a few other books out. I don't remember where it says it, but she has like fat chicks in space and like unicorns. Oh, fat ladies in space. Unicorns are jerks, dinosaurs with jobs. So they're funny and not too difficult to color. I have a bunch of books that were gifts that I haven't colored in yet because I'm terrible. So this is Zen Doodle Coloring Under the Sea. And is it a Deborah Mullet? Yes, it is. And it is just all my favorite sea critters, but it is super detailed. So that guy's cool. Ooh, I like that one too. I definitely need to, I think these bottom two shelves are the ones that I like were so far down that I never bend down to get them, which sounds ridiculous, but it's just my truth. So I'm excited to remember that all of these exist and need to work in them soon. This is Seaside Escapes by Color Creatives. And again, more sea critters. I love sea critters. I don't know if you've, you've noticed. Ooh, sea critters and, well, I guess it's bugs and pineapples, but fruit so it's not just sea critters in here i really like that fruit so i have to work in that one that one's empty then i have peter pan by fabiana atanasio i bought this just for the poster i don't know how i feel about fabiana atanasio i don't know but i wanted to do another video with the poster like i did last year which I don't remember what that one was called. It might be like Super Buddy Color. I'll try to link it up above if I remember. But um, I cut the poster up into a bunch of pieces and had my friends do different ones. So now that my friends are starting to get vaccinated, I'm thinking of doing a round two soon and then having possibly 16 friends. We'll see if I can wrangle that many people. But... I did do one in here, Brain Boosting Coloring Designs, and I did this one. And this is like when I was realizing that I really like patterns, and I think I used Crayola Super... Nope! Yes, I did! Crayola Super Tips, sorry. So Ren gave this to me, and she gave me like these cool five packs of the Crayola Super Tips. So I just used three of those five, which 
I like that page. This one Sam gave me and I never used yet. It is Wild Tessellations by Creative Haven and it's basically just patterns and it reminds me of that program that they used to have on the computers back in like elementary school where you could just draw shapes and then tessellate them and it would do it for you. And um, I thought I wanted to get into patterns and then I bought got this book and I didn't do anything. But now that I do like patterns more, hopefully I'll get back to that. Also, I am stacking these the wrong way. I have two piles next to me on my desk because it's too tall for one. And I was just stacking them on the second pile. So also by Creative Haven, I have Lotus Designs. And this is another, I don't know when I got this. I didn't know I owned this until I was looking around in my collection and I was like, huh. So I'm not sure if I bought this myself years ago, if this was Happy Mail. Let's see, let me see what year. This came out in 2012, so I have a feeling that I just had this for years and years and didn't realize it. But nothing's done in there, so. Next are my hardcover books. So I have Fairy Miracles by Clara Markova. This is the only one I have, and I'm pretty sure I got this when they were still on Amazon. So if they ever came back to Amazon, I might be getting more, but other than that, I'm not positive. I do have a few whips in here, but my only finished page is this one, this mermaid. So I don't date my pages, so I'm not sure when I did it, but you can see I use my iridescent medium on all the bubbles, so that's nice. But I've said this before too, that hardcover books are always so intimidating. I feel like I have to be really fancy and therefore I never color in them. Like Spirit Animals. This is by Hannah Carlson and I have nothing done in here. I do think I have one or two whips. Oh, I did finish that. I'm so sorry. I have one finish. I have to change my stats. I'm gonna have to put this to the side because I have my stats at the end. So we'll just remember to add something to it. And then I have a few whips, but nothing I could consider done. I just completely forgot about that one. Hooray! That's exciting. Okay. Then I also have Hannah Carl's on Seasons, and I also only have one finish, and this was actually um, my last video from last month. The title page with the Brute Burner pencils. I'm not big in pencils, or at least I'm not practiced because I'm very impatient. So I really did enjoy doing this, though. I really love these mushrooms a lot. I realized, where was it, which one? I forgot to shade one of the the flowers, but now I'm not noticing as much, so maybe it wasn't a big deal. Oh, I just forgot to shade this petal. <laughs> so there's the only one done in there. Next, I have World Beat Designs, Mandalas, and more. I didn't do anything in here yet. I have to, I really like a lot of these. I have... More Sea Critters, Majestic Ocean, Living Neon. This was really cool, abandoned book. It's all like black, oh, okay, not all. It's a lot of black background. So they, the intention is use neon and have everything pop. So I really wanna get to this. I actually just purchased some neon gel pens. So maybe I should work in here with them. That'll, that'll be cool. Then I have Unicorns and Dragons. Sorry, that's too far to the side. Actually, this is a matte cover, so I can put it right in the middle by Selena Fenich. And I think I have one other book by her, but it's not... It should be later in the pile, maybe in part two. But my friend Toll sent this to me. She had a double. Oh, this apparently has two sets of images in there. So I always love fantasy books because you can really do whatever color you want. Then I have Watercolor Decor Coloring Book Volume 4. This is Prima. This is on watercolor paper. So I really wanted this to work with my watercolors, and yet I've done nothing. I actually did that much, and I don't even like it. So that's unfortunate, but I'll have to get back in here. And I did. This is top, um, top glued, so I've torn out a few of the bird pages and given them to a friend who also dabbles in watercolor. So apparently there's four volumes of those in case you are looking out for watercolor. This is a good time to mention that I will not be linking everything down below. It is just way too many to link. So I apologize for that. But hopefully if you have any like specific questions, I can help and just ask 
in the comments and I'll try to get back to you specifically. This is a, it just says coloring book frame. Basically this was on the Carnival cruise ships. They just had it on board and it came with pencils. And yeah, the cover, you can slide a photo right in there. And I've done nothing in here either, which kind of makes me sad, but this is a pretty big variety. And then there's some Carnival cruise ships right in there, so. I just had seen this on a few cruises and I was like, I have to, like who else is this for if not me? So I picked it up and one day I will color in it or so I say. Now I have my Julia Rivers collection. I think they're all in a row. This is Enchant oh, Guardians of the Enchanted Forest. I have one done in here. This is by Forest Diver. I think I have three of his books. Apparently I really liked him. Actually all four of them are his. No, three out of my four are from him. And this one is very, very detailed. So what I ended up doing was the outlining method, which I love this and I would love to do this again. It's very obviously forest themed. So there's tons of greens. And to me, I'm not big into shading. So it would have just all looked like a solid green background. So I just outlined everything and I used, I'm pretty sure super tips. And then for some of it, like the gems, I used glitter. And I just think that's really fun and looks cool. And it's a good way to make things pop when they'd otherwise be solid green. So I might have to try that again in here. I do love his style, but I haven't been drawn to it because it's so detailed. Then I have You Are Made of Stars. This is a quote book and I'm not really into quotes. So I only have one done in here, but I don't know, I've been drawn to try this book out again. This I actually did in all highlighters. I used the Mild Liner Zebra highlighters and I love those for journaling and I tried them for this. And so that's what what's going on there, but they're all quotes. And again, I don't know, I just like quotes don't like, I can and I will, watch me. That doesn't really mean anything to me. Like I'm not inspired by that in any way, but the picture's really cute, so we'll see. We will see. Then by Forest Diver, I have the Fantastic World of the Brothers Grimm. And this has the most done in there. So let's see what we got. I have this one, which is a Hansel and Gretel page. I'm pretty sure I used pencils in these. Definitely on that one. Oh, then I used my stat. Nope, nope, nope. I used my Faber-Castell Artist Pit Pens for this one. And some glitter, of course. Another Hansel and Gretel page. For this one, I use my Prismacolors. These were one of some of the older ones I did because this was before I had other supplies. So I used my Prismacolors on that. And I used my Prismacolors on this. I actually went back with the Odorless Mineral Spirits, I think it's called, to try to smooth it out. And I definitely think it helped, but I'm not sure. It definitely looks better. What I do like about this book too is it has the list of what fairy tale the pictures are from so if you're not sure which I'm not sure about some of these you can totally look it up and that's pretty cool <clears throat> every time I would just was just peeking when we get to that 16 minute mark is when I have to clear my throat so I'm gonna take a sip of water it's so weird that that happened twice at the 16 minute mark okay my last Julia Rivers book is apparently illustrated by Ronnie C. Pios. This is Fairy Tales Doodle Adventure. And this is another one that I did, that outlining method, but this one I did it all in glitter gel pen. And I think this is a lot of fun. This book is super, super doodly. So like if you were really, really into shading and things like that, I think you could probably find anything you could think of to practice in here. And maybe you would just do the whole like one item at a time. This I just did with water markers, water-based markers, probably super tips. Um, there's a lot of Disney inspired things in here. You can kind of infer that they're Disney inspired or you can make it whatever you want. Like that looks like Ariel again and Mulan. Um, I don't think it's official, but Tinkerbell and Belle, like come on. So, but this would be great. Like if you, oh, Donatello. I assume Donatello because he's my favorite Ninja Turtle. But yeah, so you could definitely like practice and you could practice your chocolate and your mice and your tea. Or you could go in and do the whole page at once or you can do what I did and just outline everything. So 
Next, I have Hippie Animals Coloring Book. This is one of the books that I lent out and got back, but I'm only gonna show you the two pages I did. So I did this one. This was a color and chat on my channel years ago, I think. And I did Prismacolors and then glitter. So, and then I did this one and I used watercolor for this one. I think he looks super cool. And I ended up basically copying the image that they gave me. I really love doing that. I just kind of like seeing if I can, and I especially love to do it with watercolor because for me it's the easiest to work with. And I I purchased this book for this image, and I haven't done it yet. But if that's not the sassiest snake you've ever seen, I don't know what is. So one day I will do this snake. Next up is Fantastic Collections by Steve McDonald. I think this is part of a series. I don't know what else is in it, but I have this one. And again, this was when I was like wanting to do detailed stuff. Let me flip to an empty page. So it's like repetitive detailed buttons. I need to do that. I am Danny Buttons. But I did do this double page. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to see it. Let me actually switch my lamp. Oh man. Um, I wish I had done that sooner. It was on screen reading mode and now it is on book reading mode. But anyway, I did this crazy double when I was trying to use up all of my gel pens. So I did that and then I also did the same challenge, this, which is again all glitter. It's beautiful and I love it when it gets all over me. So I love that a lot. And then I actually am almost done with that, but every gel pen before it officially was empty, I would just color a pencil in here and I thought that would be fun. So yes, that is fantastic collections. Then I have the Spiroglyphic Animal Book. This is also a series. This is one of the original three, so it's the bigger size. And I have done a few in here. I have done, let's see. Whoa, uh -oh. I knew I was gonna hit the monopod eventually. I have done this eagle. And I use gel pens, but they go really quick. So I'm pretty sure I used glitter on the one way and then regular pen on the other way. If you can see that, then I have the horse and I use some sort of marker, not positive what. I have the piggy. Piggy's pretty cute. The tiger. Let's see. Yeah, this is the first one I did and I messed it up in the middle. I was so sad, but I was tired of going from the outside. So I switched to going from the inside. But when I switched, I was on the wrong end of the lines. So he's got like a extra weird zoom eye. And then again, when I was trying to finish up, I did this. I did this poor chimp wrong. So I apparently finished one, two, three, four, like six or seven gel pens off on this page, but now you can't really see the monkey anymore. So that is that one. These are fun, but again, these books are huge. So you're gonna go through those, whatever supply you use. And then this is not yet colored in, but this is Vertical Worlds coloring book by Abby Dacre. And it's very tall, first of all. And it basically is like the interior of different places. So this is a vertical art museum. So it's kind of like what you would see in an art museum, but all stacked up. Vertical airport. So all the places in an airport. And then they have the runway on the top. This is really cool. And also like can be super detailed. Vertical cruise ship. I love this. Um, so much fun. Sorry, I miss cruises a lot. Maybe next year. The zoo. But yeah, so I really want to get into this book, but I have not yet. Next is one of my biggest shames. It's Forest Girl by Apol. And I was desperate for this. I was very close to paying the like $30 shipping, whatever it costs. And it ended up showing up on Amazon. And I'm not sure, I think volume one is still there, but I know volume two and three are there. Like those are some of my high priority wish list items for my, when I next treat myself. But here is volume one. I love this book. It is gorgeous. It has the artist version on one side and then your version on the other. I have done nothing in here. I've been very intimidated. I just like looking at the art. I love it a lot. This is how far I've gotten. 
Uh, again, I was trying to copy it, but I had to use pencils instead of watercolor, and I'm not as good with that, so I haven't gotten very far. But I need to just start another page and just go for whatever my own colors, so I can at least get something going, but we will see. Okay, now's my Lulumeo collection. So I have a million unicorns. This is her Magical Creatures to Color series. I think there are currently 10 out, and I wanna say I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So unicorns is one of the newer ones, right? Um, there's actually some random things done in here from my gel pen challenge, but I don't know if I'd consider it done, so I didn't mark it all, but this one is definitely done. So again, as you can see, I used a lot of glitter gel pen. This was one of the books I really went crazy because I was like, unicorns and glitter go together. and It makes sense to me. So I finished that. And I finished this double page all with the glitter gel pens. And I finished, I'm considering this one finished because again, as you can see, there is some stuff that it's not, but a lot of it is. So I marked it off. So that is a million unicorns. That one's super cute. Then I have a million dogs, which I have actually not done anything in yet, unfortunately. This is one of the first ones that came out, and I don't know why I didn't get anything done, but I have not, so maybe one day. I'm pretty sure I got this off of Book Outlet, and if you use my link below, if you've never purchased, you can get $10 off of Book Outlet, and they usually have at least two or three of this series on there. I'm pretty sure when I last looked, they had sloths and unicorns and mermaids. I don't know, they definitely always have some. So I would definitely be on the lookout, especially if you are like interested, but not like needing them. That's a good place to find them. Speaking of, here is the sloths. I have done two in here. So I did this one with highlighters and glitter. Actually, I think this was glitter highlighters. So I'm pretty sure this was all highlighters. And apparently I tried to do my erasable highlighters and like layer and stuff. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is what this originally looked like or if just over time it kind of changed a little, but that was a fun page. And then I did this one, the like yin yang sloths and I used washi tape as my background to kind of make a brick wall looking background. That was my intent there, so. Then I have a million mermaids and I have one completely done in here. And I did this for some sort of log. Maybe, did I do this when I colored for 12 hours? Don't know, but I used my whole binds and this was, I think my first time using my whole binds for a full page. And then of course more glitter because mermaids also call for glitter. So I really love her hair a lot. And I like, thought I was funny because this color is called sand. And like, I think there were other, this might've been coral. And I was like, oh, it's C words. The newest one that I have is A Million Cute Animals. This and A Million Cute Llamas came out as book nine and 10. I found this in Barnes and Noble and I finished this page, which is the hedgehogs. And I used crayons. So it's almost all twistable crayons and then glitter around the border. So this book's super cute. Like, look at those guys. I wanna do that page next. I love this a lot. But I'm really interested in seeing what she comes out with next, if she continues this series. I'm hoping for bunnies. She does a lot of bunnies, like these bunnies. Or let's see what else. This is a little bit of a tangent, but we're here now. Uh, ooh, wow, those are more bunnies. I thought they were more sea critters. I would love, obviously, more sea critters. So koalas are super cute. She, this guy's in all of her books and I don't know what he is. So like a million cute mushroom men, maybe. And then we have a million cute bears. This was my first one from her and one of my very first adult coloring books. So I've done a few in here. For whatever reason, I really love using twistable crayons. So that's what I did for most of it. I did them in the teapots and I do have some whips in here too, but I'm not upset about whips. I kind of let them go. It's okay, it just means that's what I wanted to color in that moment. I have them in the, my only problem with the bears is that so many of them in my mind are supposed to be white. So I just don't know what to do. Cause I think like they're polar bears and panda bears. And I'm like, I don't know what to color these guys. 
I did this double page. Actually, not a double page. I did this one like two years earlier than this one. I just did this on video for coloring with crayons. And I used paint markers to make it fruit themed. And I really love the fruit theme that we got going on there. I did this as a buddy color. I really like this one too. And I, again, was using up all my glitter. So I did pastels in the background and I actually measured it out to have equal sections. And I did that one. This is how I used to color as a kid. I would very darkly outline each section and then color lightly in everything. So I kind of did that. I even did it on the border entirely. So that's fun. And that's it. There's, there's a whip I have going, but that's a million cute bears. All right, the rest of this stack is my Christmas books. And then we will go over stacks at the end. So first up is Color by Numbers Christmas Mosaics by Sun Life Drawing. I just got this. This is what's interesting about my Christmas books. I'll do a like sub disclaimer on these. Um, half of these books, I love Christmas, obviously, Jolly Coloring in 2021. But um, so a lot of these I got when I very first started coloring and didn't really understand what my coloring style was going to be. So a lot of them are uncolored because of that. And then whenever Christmas actually comes, I'm always actually too busy to color what I want. So there's a lot of uncolored things that are just beautiful to look at. And that's what was the goal of having Jolly Coloring was so that I could color them throughout the year. And I haven't done the best job. So hopefully I will continue to color in these books or this might be the section that I kind of change over this next year. And if I don't color in these, I might pass them on to again, I want to like, foster and harvest new colorists. So anyway, Color by Numbers Christmas Mosaic. This was one of my new ones from this year and I did, it seems like three pages in here. I wish that I had the black outline version, but I'm pretty sure the black outline version came out like a week or two after I got this one. So I have had to do the lines myself and I use water-based markers in here, or at least for that one. This one might've been alcohol markers. It looks like it was. So probably my Cali Arts, that is a bright bold orange that I picked. And this also looks like Cali Art. So I love these books and I definitely will get more done in there over the course of this year. Johanna's Christmas. For a while, this was my only remaining Johanna Basford book. But I do love Christmas, so couldn't resist. Oh, I skipped one. But I absolutely love this page. Um, this was my attempt at like a mixed media background, I guess. Uh, I think I just stacked watercolors on top of each other and did pencils for the bear himself. But I really love that. Then to go back, I did, oh yeah, I did the nameplate page. And this is with... This is either, it's definitely a water medium, but I'm not sure if it is watercolor pencils, it looks like to me. So I did that. And then my only other finish is this double page spread that I did with Sam in December. I think we did our Q&A in color and we did this. So he did this side and I did this side and it worked nice because I'm a righty and he's a lefty. So we could sit next to each other and color at the same time. But in the video, people were saying his kind of looked like Halloween-y. So it was like Halloween transitioning into winter and I love it. So I have a few other whips in here, but that's all my completed pages. Now, this I just got last year and didn't get the chance to color in it yet. It is by Sachin Sachdeva, and it's just called Christmas. This is one of his older books, and it is just Christmas stuff. So it's not color by number, just Christmas. I did get to color, not as much as I wanted, but a little bit in Festive Christmas by Sachin Sachdeva. This one did come out in 2020. I did one page, and I think Sam did one or two. Let's see. Oh, I did. This one Sam did. We were watching The Grinch and he colored that one and then I colored that one. So I'm looking forward to doing more in here because it's a nice simple color palette and an easier color by number, but that makes it quick and fun if you just wanna get a page done and it's also really great if you're like watching a movie or something like that. So I'm excited to do more in here. See, I'm, I'm ready to like keep all of these out, but I can't. I just have to remember they're there and go back to them. This is Fairy Merry Christmas by Deborah Muller. Is this, 
I think this is one of my very few Deborah Muller books. Obviously, I had that Zen Doodle coloring earlier, and I think I have one more coming up in part three. But I've had this for a few years now, and I've done a few pages. I did this with markers, I think water-based markers. I just seemed to throw every color I could think of on there. I don't understand, but there we go. I did this one. I really love this motif of the campers. I don't know why, and I also don't know why they're so heavily associated with Christmas at this point, but I enjoy it. I also went through a big Wink of Stella phase, which I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I used clear Wink of Stella for a lot of this for the shine. And then I have this one, which is just this peppermint fairy. And I guess I was trying to not just use Christmas colors, so I added in the lime green. Very innovative, I know. So <laughs> there's that one. Now I have All About Christmas. This is the Belba book, and I'm realizing I have another Belba book that's farther down in the stack. But this is three different styles in one, color by number, uh, with three by three squares, five by five, and regular color by number. So I did a few. This is their puzzle book that you have to like find the colors. So I think it's a stocking with stuff coming out of there. And then I did two pixel books. I'm not even gonna turn it, but it's a giant elf with a tiny house. <laughs> kind of scary when you think about it or it's perspective, I don't know. And then I did the Santa and the presents and I used the dot method for this one, so. There's also regular color by number in the back, but this type is my favorite. Hopefully in 2021, they come out with one just with the pixels. Now I have my whole big stack of Creative Haven and we're gonna see how little I've colored out of these. First up is Christmas Whimsy, a wordplay coloring book. <sighs> I didn't finish anything in here yet, but basically this series, the Whimsy series, is the item is made out of words that describe it. So this is a nutcracker. So it has nuts, the jaw, folk art, good luck, press, crack, wood, carving, and it just forms the shape. So you can, there's a whole bunch of different ways to color this, but I have a whip because of course I do, but no finishes. There it is. I just did the bow on the wreath. So I need to get to that one. I actually do have a bunch done in here. This is Merry Christmas Designs. And I have the lights done. I love this page. I did this with Prismacolors. I have these elves done. I did this for my advent in 2020. I like them a lot too. I had this vision that this is what I was going to do with them, make them rainbow from the very first time I saw them. These lights, I really like the lights, but I don't like the colors I picked for the joy to the world. So that made me a little sad. And again, I used my gold Wink of Stella. So whatever year this was, I was in a Wink of Stella phase. The Nutcracker, this was a lot of fun. I think I outlined every section with um, huh, super tips and then colored it in with crayon. Also, I need another sip of water, excuse me. <coughs> it's 16 minutes in this new clip, so I have to so weird that that happens and finally I used all metallic watercolor to do this one so I think you can see that shine real good now we're gonna speed through these next few creative oh Christmas color by number by George Tufexis nothing yet so beautiful so detailed so scary so that's my whip in there Christmas Charm by Teresa Goodridge. I think this is my only Teresa Goodridge. I can understand why everybody loves her, but boy, are these intimidating. I'm not, I don't know. These are one of the times that I'm like, I'm not talented enough, but I get mad when other people say it, so I'm gonna try to not say it again, because I did just say it. <laughs> Vintage Christmas Windows by David and Lagina Boda. This is cool because it's basically different themes and what you might see in their windows. So that's like a jewelry store and how they would decorate. Um, the florist and all the trees, the fire department, a car lot, <laughs> Santa at the bike shop, I guess. So I really wanna get into these books. And finally for Creative Haven, I think, I think, yes, is Creative Christmas by Marjorie Sarnot. And again, gorgeous 
gorgeous and intimidating. So nothing done in there. Next I have Chibi Girls Christmas by Jade Summer. This came out too late in the season. There's a whole bunch of controversy in my head. So I only have one page done in here. But since this is just the one volume, I'm pretty sure there are doubles of each of them, which sure, I did this with alcohol markers, but I'm very looking forward to doing more of these this year when it's Christmas time again or sooner. This is uncolored Nutcracker art by Scott Cummins, 30 Nifty Nutcrackers. I don't know what to do with this. I absolutely love Nutcrackers, but these are huge images and I'm not sure the best way to go about coloring them. So I don't know, for whatever reason, I really wanna put this, maybe this itself could be my, what is the word that I'm trying to look for at all? Ay, 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 I'm sorry. My glue book for this year, my like junk journal. I don't know why, but I really want to color in there. It looks so cool, but I have some more Jade Summer that are, I think, basically all uncolored by me. This is Cute Christmas, and it is cute, but it is just, I don't know. I haven't, wasn't in the mood to actually color these things, so that has doubles in it. I think these have doubles too. Christmas Coloring Book Volume 2. Nothing is done in here yet, and again, variety of detail, just lots of fun Christmas scenes. Then I have Christmas Volume 1. I do have a few things done in here because this is one of my older Christmas books. So I have this one done and I used metallic gel pens for a lot of their accents, which took forever. And uh, water-based markers. And I have this one that I'm pretty sure with all Prismacolors. So. And again, there's doubles in here and just a variety of detail. So we'll see. These are the kind of books that I'm thinking are on the cusp of being passed on. But especially like as my shelves fill up, I want to make sure that everything on there is stuff that I actually want to color. Because once I run out of room, what are you going to do? This is Christmas and Travel Mosaics by Belva Family. And I got this for review, so I have two pages done in here. This is one of their few color by numbers. So this is older from them, but it is basically different uh, celebrations around the world. And there is a key in front, what is it called? Table of contents that tells you where everything's from in case you wanna like look into what those things are. So this is Japanese. And I forget what this one is. I wanted it to be Norwegian, it might be Finland. Yeah, so that's cool, and those are fun to do. Obviously, I love color by number. I have nice little town Christmas too. These are those famous mice. I got one whip, and that's it. I made these into cheese balls instead of snowballs. Thought that was pretty funny, but I think I got these so early in my coloring journey that I didn't understand how to color on this paper yet. So I definitely want to give these another try. Um, this is the only book I think that I have two copies of. So it is the Night Before Christmas coloring book. It is a Dover coloring book by John O'Brien. And it's it goes through the whole poem. And it's a funny story how I got the second copy. Basically, if I ever want Christmas things, I want them for my birthday, not for Christmas. Because once you're at Christmas, you're not going to use it anymore. So I had this on my wish list and nobody had bought it. So I bought it for myself on my birthday, but it turned out my cousin also bought it for me on my birthday for Christmas and it was funny. So I have one from her and one from me. I only have worked in one so far. This is the kind of book that I don't mind having doubles of because lots of people are always like, ooh, I would give that as a gift. So I'm like, oh, maybe I will color one and give it as a gift or this would just be fun to do one now and then see if I got any better or worse or what happened. So I have a few pages done in here, not very much. Um, I really like the style in here, but I also don't know how to work with it very much. So again, we'll see if maybe after I finish this in a few years and I start again, I'll know. Or this might be one I give away. We will find out. And we're getting to the end. I have my Lines, Spots, Dots Christmas by Kira Sherjnova. I've been working like crazy out of this one recently. 
So I really want to finish this soon. I think I'm about halfway done. So there's a puppy dog, Christmas tree, stocking. I accidentally almost ripped the book in half. This is like the manger scene, but it, I'm not going to flip it right now. Snowman, a bell, gingerbread house. I just finished that one. Ornaments, a cat and a Santa hat. And then we got another gingerbread house. Oh no, that's the church. I don't think I, yeah, okay. Christmas tree, cat and Santa hat again. Did I, was, okay. <laughs> a wreath, a snowman, angel, and what's that one? Oh, a present. You can see better on camera. So I'm about halfway done with this one and I love this a lot. Apparently there's a Halloween version that I might look into getting this year where we'll see what else she comes out with. And I want to finish that one up soon. And finally are my two color Questopia books. Oof, we're making it. We're at the end. Christmas, color by number, black background. Both of these came out this year past year 2020 so I have done a few in here and I think both of these are on my list to finish in 2021 because I'm hoping and assuming they will come out with more so I love this page I love the colors they chose I love that it's like different so it's like a table setting I also I love this page I love that I use that bright bright orange this is their old color palette so sometimes I would just ignore it. So I think 14 orange and 11 bright orange. I just did all the same color. And oh, I have my whip. I accidentally made her too orange. But I think once I do the rest of it, it'll tone her down. And then I have the Santa's Workshop Elves and Santa flying through the air. So I have a lot to go in here, but I've been focusing on the other one first. So let's get a peek at that. This is Christmas Fantasy, and I did this guy, Santa, like oh, with an orb. I have the mermaid and the jellyfish, and I think the rest of the book. So the gingerbread house, it looks like the gingerbread lives in like an elf hat house. Maybe it's an elf house, and this is their decorations. The unicorn, I really love how this one came out. I love the look of those colors. These nice purple village. Santa checking his list. Unfortunately, markers went through and made a mess. I don't even know. And Santa rowing a boat. Like, these are like fingerprints, but I don't understand how that happened. So, a little sour note to end on. But there we go. We'll just look at this as we go through our stats. So, I found that I did one more page than I thought. Which means I showed you 55 books, 24 of which were Christmas. 24 of them are uncolored, 11 of which were Christmas, and I have 95 completed pages, 54 of which are Christmas. So that is the stats for this video. At the end of part five, I'll give you the stats overall and add everything up, but we're at 100 books so far. I can add that. That one's pretty easy. So... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you made it all the way to the end, drop some unicorn emojis or the word unicorn down below. Next up is gonna be my not color by numbers. Pretty much all of them. Uh, this was a little bit longer of a video, but hopefully you enjoyed and I'm excited. I'm liking this series and I hope you are too. And I cannot wait to find out all these stats. I'm really intrigued by knowing what my actual stats are. So I have to see if, well, we'll see. We're gonna make some plans once we find out the stats. So thanks so much for watching. Like this video, comment down below anything you wanna comment, subscribe, I'm a fun time, and I'll see you again in two days with part three. Bye guys.